Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to continue with our project, which by the way, it has received quite a bit of, uh, of uh, what's the word, uh, support. We got over a thousand views in just a couple of days, which is um, like almost double the amount of what we usually get. So thank you. Thank you everyone. If you're new watching the series, uh, subscriptions are always helpful for us. We want to grow as a channel. So any comment, subscription, like, share, all of that helps us. Thank you very much. Uh, very important news, the uh, hair course for games, uh, course uh, the, the hair here for games course is ready i have finished the course i'm just getting all of the files ready and uh, it's going to be available for you guys very very soon i'll probably do a video in the next couple of days showing you some of the other exercises that we're going to be doing it's a really really cool course i think you guys are, are really going to love it and uh yeah let's let's jump onto the onto the onto the stuff so i haven't been able to to upload as frequently as i would like yesterday i miss uh, i missed yesterday's uh, upload because um one thing that i wanted to share with you guys is um, I have a company with a, a partner of mine and um, we are gonna be opening a new wing in one of the most famous museums here in the city, which is called the Museo del Desierto. So we're, we're opening a whole new section and one part of that whole new section is gonna be VR. We're gonna be doing VR experiences there and uh, we've been working on that for the last couple of months. So that's why uh, some days I'm really, really busy on, on that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so today we're going to continue with the with the character right here, and uh, we're going to be doing uh, what's the the anatomy, right? Like we want to polish the anatomy a little bit more. So um, the base mesh looks okay to me. I, I like it. I think the proportions are good. But we definitely need to start working on the like on some of the definitions of the of the character. So let's start here with the chest. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. If you've never done anatomy before, don't worry. Uh, it's relatively easy. Let me just close Photoshop. I've mentioned this before, but there's a, a really um, a really bad like bug between Photoshop and and uh, and Seabrush where they like compete against each other with the sensibility of the tablet. So for some reason, if you have both of them open, tablet doesn't work. So the pectoral muscle is like this very big, big muscle that we have here on the chest. And the most important thing about the pectoral is that it creates kind of like a shelf going forward. So you're gonna see like a really flat here on the top and then kind of like a little volume here. It, it kind of looks like a step. So you're gonna see the division of where the pectoral muscle uh, stops. And the pectoral muscle goes to the arm. It, it crosses uh, the, the shoulder uh, joint and it goes into the arm. So what the pectoral muscle does is it brings our uh, arms uh, close to our chest to kind of like to protect ourselves. That's the that's the main function of the pectoral muscle. So, or one of the main functions. So we're just gonna start like building it up here. One thing that's gonna be really important, doesn't really matter for this character, but I like to add it are the clavicles just because they're a really cool cool landmark that we can use to, to guide ourselves and, and identify where um, the muscles are gonna go. So clavicles are like a, like a bike handle. So they have this sort of like S shape going from the center of the body. That's the sternum right there. So it's the clavicles. Center of the body all the way to this like apex point here at the, at the shoulder. And the pectoral muscle uh, attaches itself to that, uh, to, the, um, to the clavicles, to the ribs, and then it goes in, and inserts itself into the uh, into the arm. So as you can see, I'm using my clay builder, kind of like sketching. I love using my clay builder, like a kind of like a sketch brush to to fix this thing. Now I'm gonna use my trim dynamic because since this is a stylized character, I do want to have a little bit more stylization here on the on the border of the pectoral muscle. So you can see me like creating this sort of like planar look where the pectoral muscle is going. You see this in uh, like Fortnite does it a little bit. Um, Street Fighter does it a little bit. So there's a couple of games that go for like this sort of stylized effect. And you're gonna see this sort of effect where, where things are a little bit more like chiseled out like this. I'm gonna go with my Demi and Stander. I'm gonna finish finish chiseling out my um, my pectoral muscles right there. There we go. They go up like this. And that's it. It's pretty cool. Now, immediately after the pectoral muscles, we have something really, really important, which is the uh, rib border. Um, and this one I like to, again, like use a little bit of clay buildup kind of like a market right here because it really pushes against the surface of our skin. So you can actually feel if you, if you like touch the, the, like the upper part of your torso, you should be able to feel most of the, of the border here for the, for the rib cage. And I can see that the character is kind of like thin on the abdomen. So it's kind of like a dip where it goes from like the, like the border of the rib cage to the actual like abdominal muscles and stuff. I'm going to use control shift and uh, change this to a lasso move this a little bit there we go uh, and I'm gonna hide the arms for now because I don't want to have them affect the way I'm working 
Now over here we usually have a very strong muscle. It's called the latissimus dorsi. So I'm just gonna add some of the volume right here. Again, it really doesn't matter for this particular character because he's covered in this like uh, spheres. Um, but it's good to always practice, even if it's just like a quick sketch. Here, there's a very a couple of muscles called the serratus, serratus anterior, and it's uh, it's like a saw, like little fingers right here. So we're gonna add them, then smooth them out. So they're there, but not super obvious. And sometimes on some characters, you can see like the uh, obliques, like the fibers of the obliques going like that. And it's uh, it kind of helps. I'm gonna use my trim dynamic again to sharpen up a little bit of the rib cage right here. Make sure it reads, like the shadow reads a little bit closer to what we have in the concept. There we go. On the center, the ribs are not together. There's a uh, something called the siphoid process. I think that's the name in English. In Spanish, is apophysis siphoide, and uh, that's the like the last little bone of our sternum. Sternum is made of three bones uh, or three parts of the bone, and um, and the last little part of the sternum is called the apophysis siphoide, siphoid process. You guys want an anatomy course? Don't worry, we're preparing one. <laughs> There's one course before that one. Uh, I'm not sure if, if the anatomy course is going to be after that one, but there will be an anatomy course this year, I promise. So now we're going to add the abdominal muscles, at least the ones that we see, which are those right there. And from the side view, I really want to be able to see like the, like the general shape. I do see he has a little bit of a belly. It's kind of fun. And we definitely need to add the, the navel because we do see the navel on the concept. So let's have a little hole right there. And then just very smoothly with our clay buildup, we fill in some of the skin effects there so that our pectorals look a little bit better. There we go. This is like, honestly, probably how much I would push this sort of like detail because the character is very stylized. So most of, most of the work is gonna be done on the, on the texture job. Um, so the only thing you wanna do with like this sort of anatomy is just make sure that it looks okay. It looks nice. People see it and it's like, yeah, that looks like a rib cage. If you get that, then you're already you're already winning. There we go. Now let's go for the arms. One of my favorite parts of the of the whole body, the the arms. So arms are really fun because there's a lot of cool muscles that everyone knows. So it's a it's a little bit easy to learn, right? Because it's like, oh yeah, I know that muscle. This is the deltoid muscle, right? So the deltoid, it's a big muscle, kind of like in the shape of a shield that is right here on the on the front, and it has three main heads: the like frontal head the medial hair, head right here, and the back head right here. And they all insert as well on the, like halfway through the arm. So, so it's gonna like a triangular shape going here into the arm. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pass. Where's my, give me one second. I'm missing my little cushion. Oh, there it is. I use this little thing to, like get my elbow. Some people like to draw with the elbow raised. It's a, it's a little bit tiring though. So I like using the little cushion. There we go. So I'm gonna use my trim dynamic to uh, get like the planes of the, of the delta a little bit clearer. This goes in line with the sort of like style that we're going for. And now we're gonna go for one of the most famous muscle. Everyone knows this muscle, it's the bicep, right? But one of the things that a lot of people uh, make the mistake is they they like pump the, the bicep like really, really high. They, they make it like a really, really balloony. Uh, I blame uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, here in Mexico. Most of my students saw Dragon Ball Z when they were kids. And, um, and they tend to draw them like really like super, super strong. Uh, and yes, I mean, the bicep is a really strong muscle, but it shouldn't be like a, just like a cloud, right? It has something called an insertion point. It has something called an, an origin point. It has different like uh, sections on the, on the muscle. So as you can see, it's like a, like a nice little chiseled. I like to compare it to like a loaf of bread. If you buy like a, like a bread, uh, like in, you know, for sandwiches and stuff, I'm not sure how they call it. Uh, how do they call it? Box breath? Is that it? I don't know. Just like the, the ones that you use for sandwich, right? It's this like sort of like rectangular shape. So that's what we're uh, going off uh, for here. So this will be my bicep. It's on the front, like middle section of the arm. So this is what we're gonna get like that. There we go. Now in between the bicep and the tricep, which the tricep is the, is the muscle that's back here, of course, there's a little bit of a muscle called the brachialis. Brachialis. It's kind of like the like the meat of a hamburger. Sometimes you'll see it. It's it's uh, you need to be like really low on on fat percent to really see it. But it's it's important to have like something like a little bit of a volume there. 
Now, on the back side of the arm, we have the tricep. And the cool thing about the bicep and the tricep is that they do opposite jobs, right? So the bicep will bring your arm like this, and the tricep will bring the back, the arm back, uh, like it will extend the arm. So the bicep flexes the arm, and the tricep extends the arm. And that's what the, um, that's what the function is. That's one of the like secrets of anatomy. Every time you have a muscle, there's going to be another muscle that does a similar job. Well, not similar job, an opposite job. It's going to do the opposite of with the what the muscle you're uh, sculpting or or utilizing as uh, doing. Now the tricep has a really strong tendon that goes into the into the elbow. So this is going to be my elbow. At the side of the elbows, we have like a couple of little bones. That I'm just going to add there. One of the things I like about stylized characters is that you don't have to be like super precise. Uh, you can just like get the idea of the anatomy, and that's usually good for it. One thing I like to do here. I'm gonna add some volume, and with my trim dynamic, I really wanna make this thing flat, like this. And now we can like increase this. Oh, it looks seems like my baby's crying. Maybe she got scared or something. Don't worry. If it was if it was uh, if it was an emergency, I wouldn't be here. My wife would already be telling me, "Come fast." We need to check what the baby's doing. Having a baby is a great challenge. Okay, cool. So there we go. Now here in the back, we have another couple of muscles like the trapezius and stuff. I'm not even gonna worry about them because again, on the concept, most of this thing is covered by the um, by the webs and by the X of like infested spider or something. I'm just gonna like kind of like give an idea of what, what I would normally see there, but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be there, okay? So there we go. Now, when you see it from the side, the tricep muscle is gonna be higher than the bicep. That's a very common mistake that people make when doing arms. They they keep the bicep like at the same like height as the as the tricep, and they're supposed to be a little bit more like separated. Now, here you can see that my bicep is like sticking towards uh, the the chest. You want to keep them separate. I know it's a little bit difficult right now because of Dynamesh, but usually you do want to have like enough space separating. Uh, like the arms and the and the torso, because when you rig this, if there's not enough like polygons here and you like bring the arm down, all of this section gets like a really weird uh, stretch that looks uh, horrible. So yeah, I would advise against having this thing so close. Now uh, it also um, uh, this is something important that a lot of my students miss uh, uh, as well. When you see a concept like this, you need to ask yourself, what's gonna be like the range of motion that my character is gonna have? Because I know that the big brute guy that we have right here, he's not gonna be able to raise his arms, arms right? So if, if we want to do like a slam, and, he, and we do this, what's gonna happen is all of the spikes and all of the eggs right here, they're gonna crunch and they're gonna create like something horrible. So more, more, most probably, he's gonna be just like punching like forward, right? Maybe if we wanna do a slam, we do something like this, where we don't raise the arms all the way up, but we keep them low. And um, and that means that, again, we don't have to worry that much about the anatomy, like on the, on the underside of the arm, because we're not gonna be seeing it. So range of motion is also important. Uh, I, I remember when I was a student, I used to think that every single model and every single monster and thing that I did should be like able to do every single range of motion. Nah, that's that's not how it works. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, your, your model should be ready to do any sort of animation, but in production, you just make sure that the object or the character can do what the concept or the action or the animation is gonna require, and that's it. Um, Sometimes we like, I, I used to think that my, my characters would like live forever and you would do like a lot of things with them. More often than not, your character is just gonna be on <laughs> like on the beginning level of a game and then he's gonna die to the hero and that's it. You just have like a normal attack, normal idle, and that's it. All that work, all that modeling stuff, and you're just gonna have some very basic animations. Here on the arm, we have something called the brachioradialis and the extensor carpa radialis longus, which are two muscles that go from the arm to the forearm, but they go around uh, the, the forearm like this. So you're gonna see this sort of like volume, uh, like pushing up. Let me see the concept. Um, I don't really see it on the concept, like it's a little bit there, but not, not that much. And then we have something called the flexors and something called the extensors, which are other sets of muscles. The flexors are gonna go to the inside of the hand. So they're gonna be going like here. And the uh, flexors are gonna be going to the outside of the hand, so like this. We have, of course, the wrist. Now here, if we follow the line of the elbow, you can actually touch the um, the ulna 
which is the, the, the bone that's at the side of the arm. So if you follow the ulna, you can see a bony or you can feel a bony protrusion pretty much going from here to like a little bone that we have here on top of the pinky finger, like right about there. So I'm going to carve in a little bit of a line there. And then it's gonna be like indication of the of the ulna. And that bone is really important, that like bony landmark, it's important because that's where we're gonna know uh, where the um, uh, flexors and extensors end. So the extensors are all this guys over here and the flexors are gonna be on this like inner part right here. And again, we could of course like sculpt every single fiber of all of the muscles here in the forearm, no need. They're gonna be covered by webs and, um, and we're gonna be like a, painting this like in a more stylized fashion. The one thing that's important about arms and forearms is that the forearms have a little bit of an extra volume here on the outside like this. And, and the inner volume, the, the flexors are not at the same height. Like you're gonna see that the extensors plus the brachioradialis and the extensor corpus radialis longus, they're gonna be like a little bit higher than the rest of the element. The one thing that looks pretty cool and you can kind of see it right here is we do get a little bit of a line in between these guys. So it's kind of like a triangle like this. So I'm gonna a little bit more intense right there so we can see the line and then of course i'm gonna grab my trim dynamic and i'm gonna flatten out all of this like round shapes so that we get this sort of like stylized more of a stylized effect for the for the character there we go i'm gonna push this thing a little bit more like this to kind of have like a nice nice curve this has to do with this sort of like effect that we have right there and yes, I know that we're gonna have the the uh, the webs later on, but yeah, oh, there we go. Now let me save this real quick. Always, always save, and I always recommend saving like different versions of your character because you never know when a file is gonna get corrupted. And if we take a look at uh, what we had when we started, which is this thing right here, and what we have now, well, you can see the change, right? Just. Um, almost 20 minutes of work and uh, and we're already here. So this is the this is the magic of, uh, of 3D, the fact that you can you can do all of these things. Now, I'm gonna fill the whole color, so I'm gonna say color, fill object again, just so that everything's green. Going back or down here to the legs, uh, you can see that he has really, really strong legs and we have one of the main uh, muscles on the leg is called the uh, quad muscle, the quad quadricep, quadricep, quadricep. I always pronounce them wrong, sorry about that. It's, uh, it's uh, I'm used to pronouncing them in Spanish, so when you translate them, I always like kind of like mess up. So the quadricep, quadricep muscle, I think that's the proper way to say, starts right here on the hip. It has this sort of like teardrop shape like this. And it creates this humongous volume. It's a really, really huge muscle that, that we have here on the, on the front of the leg. And uh, the quadricep is divided into four. It has four heads. That's why it's called quadricep. Uh, one of the heads we're going to see right here. So I'm going to add like a little like a line. Actually, that one goes a little bit lower. It's going to go all the way like over here. That's the, again, the, the teardrop shape. That's one of the heads. The other one of the heads is going to be like a central head right there. And the other one's going to be like here, like a, like a lateral head right here. Soften this up. And there we go. We get one, two, three. Those three little heads, which is what we see here. One, two, three. Uh, then all of them in a very similar fashion to the, um, to the elbow or to the tricep, they're going to create like a really massive tendon that's going to go here to the knee. So I'm going to draw the knee right there. I'm going to sharpen the knee a little bit, like a little bit like, yeah, sharper. And then I'm going to use my Damien standard to, to push like the, like the lines of the tendon a little bit more just so we can see it on the normal map later on when we uh, texture. There we go. Now, some people like to, to rotate the legs out um, to make him look, or to, look, to make the characters look more powerful. I would advise against this because it makes rigging a lot more difficult. So if you keep the legs straight, that's usually better. Doesn't mean that you can't rig the legs um, uh, like if they're like facing out. Uh, but it's a little bit easier if you if you don't do that. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of sculpting and modeling for a project, and you want to be a good friend to your rigger, uh, try not to do the legs like facing facing outwards. It, it looks like ten times cooler. Okay, I can show you here real quick. Like if we mask the legs right here, and we put this right about there. Like just doing this, as you can see, 
like just rotating the, the the legs out, it, it makes it look way way more realistic because no one really stands with the with the like legs facing uh, forward. So yeah, I mean it, it makes for a more nicer looking character, but your riggers are gonna hate you because it's uh it's not the end of the world. Like I've rigged characters with legs like to a lot of different directions, um, but it's um, it's just more time consuming. So something that should take like I don't know five minutes ends up taking like half an hour to make sure that you get it like perfectly right with all of the local rotation axis and stuff. So, so that's why I recommend not to do that. Uh, then uh, on the back here on the, on the leg, something interesting happens. Uh, we have of course the, the glutes, we, we don't really see, we have the pants, so no really need to worry about. And here we have a division, there's gonna be a division. The, um, then we have the um, biceps uh, femoris, which is the bicep of the leg. And then we have something called the semi-tendinous and semi-membranous, a couple of, uh, of um, what's the word, muscles that help with all of this thing. So the bicep femoris, I think is the one that goes like outside like this, and it creates a little bit of volume going out. And then the, the other ones that I mentioned, semi and semi-membranous are gonna go in. And remember I talked about like a little bundle of uh, connections that we got here in, in the inside of the, of the knee? That's where all of these muscles are gonna be like attaching to. So as you can see, I kind of like follow the shape of the leg and that creates. So on the inside of the, of the leg, you're gonna see this like, uh, like little ball, little sphere of all of the connective tissue. And on the outside, it's gonna be really, really, really straight because we're coming from this uh, extensor fascia, fascia latte. Lata? I always say Lata like a, <laughs> like a Starbucks, um, uh, which is right here. So it's like a little triangular shape and it has like a super, super, super thick tendon that goes uh, all the way through the side. It combines with other tendons and it creates this like super intense, um, like straight line here on the, on the outside of the, of the knee. On the back of the knee though, something interesting happens. You, you get something called uh, the, in, in, in Spanish it's, it's Fosa Popitlia. I always found that one was uh, really funny. Let me let me see if let me see if I'm not mistaken, because late then I I'm just started saying like s stupid things and, <laughs> and you guys just believe me because I say them with so much confidence but sometimes I'm wrong so yeah it is called a fossa popitlia in Spanish I'm not sure what the name is in 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 English but this is the like the little hollow thing that we have on the back of the knee and a lot of like arteries and veins and uh, nerves go through there but the interesting thing is when you put skin on this, it's not it's not gonna look like a, like a hollow section. It's not gonna look like this sort of like diamond. It's actually gonna be pushing out. So you're gonna get like a diamond, but like a positive diamond push, pushing out. Because after the, the fossa popitli, after this thing right here, a pop little for foes or pit, I don't know, like the knee pit right here, we have the gastrocnemius, which are the, the calf muscles. So the calf muscles, they originate like this. There's two of them. They are coming from the outside and they create this super, super big mass uh, right here. They combine with another muscle called the soleus, which creates the Achilles tendon, one of the strongest tendons that we have in the body. Just gonna be right about there. And that's it. On the front, we have the tibia, which is this big bone that goes to the side. Uh, actually, it goes to the inside. So it does this, there we go. Very similar to the, to the elbow, you can feel the tibia all throughout its, uh, its surface. And we get this nice little like bundle there. And then there's another little bone down here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the anatomy. I know this was like a 20 minute quick overview of anatomy, but uh, if, again, if we compare what we have here, which was just uh, the blocking, let's do, Field objects that we can see. So this was just the blocking, and this one, which is way, way more refined. This is what we want to have, right? Like this is the the character that we're eventually going to be texturing. Um, and even though we can still add more details, and we still need to do, of course, the hands and the feet, uh, we're in a very good position. I think this uh, a really nice. Um, what's the word? Really nice uh, advancement. Is that the proper word? Progress. Really nice progress for the character. Now I'm not I'm not gonna spend too much time on on a lot of the stuff here because I know that there's a lot of other uh, assets that are gonna be on top. So all of that hard work that we just did, as you can see, a lot of it is gonna be it's gonna be gone. Uh, but not all of it. So so that's why it's important to to really like spend a little bit of time on, on this sort of stuff so that all of these things show through the portions that we're gonna be seeing. So we do have a little bit of the back muscles over here. So let's let's add a little bit of the obliques. And there we go. 
Now, another reason why it might be a good idea to spend a little bit more time in making sure everything looks as nice as possible is because you never know if there's going to be variants of this enemy, right? So let's say later on they tell you, oh, yeah, there's going to be a variant, but he doesn't have the X anymore. So you're going to see the whole like torso and arms and stuff. Oh, then that means that we, of course, need to uh, finish modeling everything else. So yeah, this is this is it, guys. Um, I'm going to stop the video right here. This is going to be it for today. And tomorrow we're going to be back with uh, hands and feet. We're going to be I'm going to be showing you how to do hands and feet, like a quick blocking of the of the elements so that we have the whole body ready and then we can move on into the props. So if you like the video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, uh, stay tuned. There's like a little bell icon that you can get so that you can get the notifications whenever we upload the videos. Uh, all of that helps us grow. Uh, comments, comments are really important. So let us know in the comments. What do you think? How was your day? How are you doing? That's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.